Good morning from Kitzbühel, Austria, famous for the treacherous Strive downhill ski run. But that is not why we're here today. And we've had a lovely invite from Bentley to drive the all new Bentayga V8 with. Hello! It's me 150. It's kind of. I, <laughs> I, I think we can put together a show off this. We spoke about this briefly. There's, yes. There's something about Shmi and me. It's got a good ring to it. <laughs> so I think when we get bored of our own format, let's just travel the world in wicked cars, like just touring, it talking about like some great stuff. <laughs> yeah. So like um, we're on this launch here. Here it is. This is our car. Now this for Tim is, is I wouldn't say old news because this is the new V8, but this is the first time that I have driven a Bentayga. And this is like the 12th time you've, you've driven <laughs> Something one. Something like that, because I went to the, the launch of the W12. Yes. Um, and the thing you'll notice about it is it's very Bentley in the way of luxuriousness, comfort. I mean, that, you should be making your own opinion, not listening no, to no, me. No, no, but it's interesting because normally I would have experienced a portion of one of these cars. And uh, right now this is entirely new for me. And it's quite interesting. I actually. guess from one point it's quite annoying because I don't have the W12 to compare it to. But from I think that's a good. Different take, I can, it's a complete be, fresh opinion. I'll be very interested to hear yeah. what you think of it that way around. That way around. Okay. Yeah. So I'm actually uh, spending uh, the following three days after this in the W12. So I'm doing it in the reverse pretty much <laughs> to everyone else. Uh, I have no idea why I'm so late to this party, but we're here. It's snowing. We've got a coffee stop in somewhere picturesque. So we're going to hop in the Bentayga V8 and do this. Let's hit it. Standard procedure. Sorry. And then bang off. Yeah, bang off the old feet there. Yeah. I would say this is the first turn of the wheel in the Bentayga, but technically we have just been driving for 20 minutes. But as far as you're concerned, <laughs> it's the beginning. It's the beginning. We found um, a nice location. Yes. So uh, I learned, learned something every day about Tim. Uh, you love a good log shot. <laughs> a good photo of a nice car in a good colour like this <laughs> alongside a background. Hence, you can probably see behind Timber us. Yard. Yeah. yeah so, um, makes you a good one. so, Tim obviously will also be making a, a video on this car, so link below to his oh, thank you very video. Much. But because we're sharing a car today, we're doing two very different takes. I'm uh, taking you along for uh, what we in the game classify as the Please lifestyle video. For six kilometers. Thank you, posh British lady. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, format of the day, we are en route to a coffee stop. Uh, if the hotel that we stayed in last night is anything to go by, it is going to be resplendent. And then we're going to put the Bentayga through its uh, more dynamic challenge by going <laughs> ice driving, uh, which will be cool. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be awesome. Uh, apparently, you can turn off all of the systems on this uh, and quote the gentleman who was giving us the presentation this morning, uh, have a little bit of sideways. So Four-wheel drive sideways. It's going to be great. Yeah. So let's explore this beautiful country in this fantastic car, find out what it's all about, have some coffee, go sideways. <laughs> let's hit it. <laughs> Some coffee, go sideways. <laughs> Not don't have coffee while going sideways. No. <laughs> Although that would go viral, I'm sure. <laughs> So we've now found ourselves conveniently on a tight, twisty mountain road, winding our way up to where I believe our coffee stop will ultimately be. Uh, but I believe this is now the opportune moment to talk about the characteristics of this car because it has been described as having the dynamic range of the Continental GT, the luxury of the Bentley Mulsan, and interestingly, the practicality of a Range Rover, which I found fascinating because obviously that is a direct competitor to this car. Uh, and interestingly for me, I am also the owner of a Range Rover. So it's an interesting place to sit because I also have an Audi RS6. Now, the reason I mention that is because I actually use that car as my more dynamic daily driver. I find it's the car that I drive when I want something practical, but also a bit more sporty and dynamic. This is saying that it offers the luxury on top of that of a mm. Mulsanne. Bentley as a whole right now, the interior game on these guys, they are killing the game. It's good. And 
the, the versatility or what, what you get for your money, because remember this is a £30,000 cheaper car than the W12 version. Yes. £136,000 for one of these. That's and quite a difference. For that, place. you get this incredible level of luxury. Like all of this carbon fibre is right? everywhere. Yeah. And it's, the materials, the leathers, the nice, the metal bits that you press and pull and touch. Yeah. And I can tell you, I've, you know, I, <clears throat> excuse me, lose my voice. You know, I've By used the Bentayga to go to IKEA. Yes. I did, I did three runs in a Bentayga in IKEA. Yeah. And I was buying like two meter thirty tall wardrobes and stuff. That's amazing. And, yeah. Like using it how a practical yeah. versatile yeah. SUV should be used. <laughs> So um, with that as a case study then, clearly it ticks the practicality of a Range Rover. Big time. No big problem. Time. As it happens, I actually had a transfer from the airport to the hotel in a Bentley Mulsanne. And okay. I'm actually going to say that the interior on this is actually a step on. I think it's beautiful. Well, it's a slightly newer generation, right? Yeah. I mean, the Mulsanne's been through a facelift, so to speak, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's a model that's nearing the, nearing the end of its life and not the beginning. Exactly. So interestingly, I've had the opportunity lately to spend some time around some other Volkswagen Audi Group products. I uh, filmed with the Lamborghini Urus a few weeks ago in Dubai. Uh, that product and this product are based on the same platform of the VAG Group, uh, call it the MLB platform, which is basically the chassis which is shared across this car, Audi Q7, Urus, KN. KN. Um, and some VWs as well. Yes, that's it. So there's a two-sided argument to this. On the one hand, which we were talking about earlier, it gives the group the opportunity to throw a lot of investment into one platform and therefore make it the best it can be. The trade-off with that, and I'll come around to why this thing is cool, the trade-off of that is obviously there's multiple cars sharing the same components. Now, one of the remarks I made upon first stepping into the Urus was, yes, it has a lot of Lamborghini DNA and design language in it, but there was sort of no escaping this sort of Audi feel about it. Like there was a, lots of switch gear and things and buttons that, as an RS6 owner, I sat in front of that wheel and I was like, wow, I'm back in an RS6. You, you notice that more than me. Sure. A big time. I was like, wow, that's off, like that button's there. You know, it, it, it all sort of felt very Audi. This car, and this is why this is different, I would say Bentley, and this is why their interiors are so special, they do everything in house. Now, if you look around the switch gear on this car, there is very little componentry that, that is shared with the VAG group. The only things I can see are a few of the, the controls on the steering wheel, and that's been very well disguised by adding this iconic Bentley it's, it's the same switch here gear. As well. Same here, right? These dials that are similar to Audi with that's the right. climate control settings, but yeah. they're finished again. Exactly. They're very nice. Surround. But what's really nice is because Bentley do all of their interior in house, like it is designed, manufactured, like produced in house, that's why it has this totally different, iconic Bentley feel about it. And I think that's why, for me, as soon as I step in this car, it feels completely like its own standalone brand. This stitching here, for example, this is a new cross stitch. Um, aesthetically beautiful, but to give you an idea of how much level of work and craftsmanship Bentley put into to their cars, um, to apply this stitch in the car takes 30 hours of work. Now, you might say, sounds reasonable. As a slice of context, to build a complete new Mini takes 10 hours. <laughs> so, so when I say Bentley specialise in luxury interiors, that is really where I feel I get in this car and to touch and interact with every surface really stands it above everything else, which is literally from the same family. So yeah, that for me right now is the biggest takeaway that I really do feel like I am in, I mean, Bentley. So they have a proprietary anti-roll system in this which, to give it some context, generates over a thousand newton meters of torque to keep this car level. Uh, what's interesting about that is that this engine only develops 770 newton <laughs> meters of torque, so the thing that keeps this thing flat is more powerful than the thing that propels it forwards, which I think is pretty awesome. That's a good stat. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we have just arrived at our coffee stop for the day. Check this out. Slightly 
over the shoulder shot but here is our lineup of all of the other Bentegas which are on this uh, this group tour let me just show you something it was interesting that uh, they should compare these cars with a Range Rover because um, my car back home is a uh, British racing green it's a metallic British racing green but on the photos when I bought the car it was supposed to look like that <laughs> these guys have made this green look fantastic even in this flat light like today it's overcast not great they still managed to make the green really pop whereas on my Range Rover back home you really need beautiful bright sunlight to make it look as green as that I think the biggest the biggest thing to say is I'm not a big SUV fan okay don't really like them but you that like Bentayga when you stepped out of this one you were like V8 is that V8? Is that the tone of your voice was so surprised it's good, isn't it? I've got almost, I've got little to none experience of driving SUVs because I don't feel like they're fit in my life. I much okay. rather want to drive a two-seater car. I've got no friends, I've got no dogs, so I'd much rather have a two-seater. Who are we? <laughs> what are we to you? <laughs> we drive you. individual mere, cars. Yeah, mere peers <laughs> and colleagues. You know, <laughs> you drive your Ferrari, he drives his Ferrari, and I drive, like, whenever we're going from A to B, we each drive. <laughs> yes. This is true. So <laughs> yeah, I don't need The it. least efficient method possible. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm in with Tim. He hasn't driven yet. We're going to swap roles. But for me, it's his entire... I've never driven the Bentayga before, ever. Okay. Oh, really? So I haven't yeah. driven the oh, wow. W12 okay. to even compare it to. Mm. So I'm in the W12 tomorrow. So that'll be interesting. My summary? V8 sounds better. Okay, Andrew, okay. Cool. It feels more fun. Mm. Okay. You'd buy the W12 if you were that rich and you just hit the top of the range one. I would advise you to look at your spec sheet and just see how much your car costs because it's well, frightening. It's pretty high end. <laughs> Have you not seen? <laughs> no. Do you want to guess how much our car costs? <laughs> I told him. No, no, no. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. <laughs> what, do you think the, what do you think the price of our Bentayga is? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> what, what was yours? Ours is 207. 207? I think yours is 221. Two hundred and twenty-two thousand five hundred and ninety-four pounds, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Enjoy that. Yes, we will. <laughs> Over fifty percent of the value of the car on optional extras. <laughs> As the Bentayga comes past right now. There's another one <laughs> on cue. <laughs> okay, we've just wound our way back down the mountain after that perfectly timed coffee stop. Uh, now this is interesting, so earlier on we were discussing this car's breadth of ability. Bentley themselves has positioned it as being a sort of continental GT on stilts with the luxury of the Mulliner. Now, case in point, we've been driving in sport mode. We are on a piece of tarmac which is the worst we've seen all day. It's broken, it's bumpy, there's potholes, there's undulations. Now in sport mode, you can probably see both myself and Tim kind of having a bit of a bump around. <laughs> We've just been playing with it uh, and I wasn't filming at that time and I've been compelled to switch on the camera and talk about it because I'm honestly shocked at the difference. You turn it up to comfort. That the is active anti roll does stupid. Stuff. Yeah. And the, t the terrain is the same it's, horribly broken it's, it's tarmac. Horrible. I'm looking <laughs> at bumps with my eyes that aren't coming through the steering wheel. It's really weird. I think the most impressive thing though is if you have a sliding scale, how far it goes to both ends. Yeah. It's dynamic in a proper way. It, it really drives is. flat when you're on it. Yet it rides over this stuff. Like if Amazingly you were driving this well. stuff in a, in a sort of carbon tub track focused <laughs> supercar. Shake your hair like your mustache. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shmi is now in the driving seat, coffee break done. We conveniently find ourselves on the Autobahn in the de-restricted section. Mm -hmm. So you know what that means. The only caveat is we are on winter tyres, which uh, automatically limits the car to 230 kilometres an hour. Which you know, means you know we're going to have to go find it. Up to this point so far, we're already at like 180 kilometres an hour. It is madness. <laughs> Just cruising like anyone. Put well. down, feel that torque as the numbers pick up. constantly feel that pull. Over 200 with relative ease there. And as you mentioned earlier, 
when you really plant your foot, the pitch yes. of the car is still really flat. It doesn't, for, for the weight and size, it doesn't, it doesn't pick like up anywhere near back. as much as you think it yeah. might. But it's interesting because you can still feel it get that sort of traction squat. Yes. But it doesn't roll back. It's really impressive. That does the momentum. Thing. Here we go. What are we on now? It's a touch too busy, but touch too. But what's interesting is all the way up there, the pull feels linear and the same. There's no yeah. drop off. No, completely all the way through. Really beginning to like this car. Very cool. So there we have it, a phenomenal day and my first experience in the Bentley Bentayga and it was the all new V8. As I mentioned, I haven't had the opportunity to try the W12 yet, but experiencing that V8 today, I couldn't imagine the car with anything else. It suited the car so much, loads of torque, loads of power, dynamically, I think, as you've seen, that car might just epitomize, it might define SUV. To be able to drive it like we did on the road, flowing through those country roads, and then to be able to switch it to comfort and feel like you're floating on a magic carpet, to be able to do this on ice, driving sideways, you can turn off all traction, and you've seen it, we were on the lock stops, penduluming that thing around like it was a proper supercar. So I am truly blown away by it. Up until this point, I'd only ever read about Bentaygas and friends who had driven them, told me about them and how good they were. Um, and I've got to be honest with you, when the Bentayga launched, I thought the styling wasn't that great. This new styling pack, particularly the carbon pack on the exterior, it's sort of changed the overall lines and shape and feel of the car and it's looking so much better. So I am now spending a few more days in Austria and it just so happens that Bentley have lent me another Bentayga to go and explore this wonderful country and this fantastic mountain range. Might go and do a dab of skiing, find out what this car is all about. So stay tuned, please subscribe if you like what you've seen. And also, if you're a regular subscriber to this channel and haven't um, been getting the alerts for when new content launches, it's because the algorithm of YouTube right now is changing and being a bit funny. So if you wanna know when a new video is dropped, click the bell next to the subscribe button on this channel and you'll be first to know when a new video drops. As always guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.